So good afternoon, if I could have your attention, please. So we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Lauren Kidder. I'm one of the Passport Coordinators this semester for Passport. Um, please sign in and sign out. If you don't do both, you will not receive credit. If you didn't sign in, just come see me after and make sure that you sign out. Um, so today I have um, Staff Sergeant Rudy De La Rosa here and then also um, Salazar here. Um, um, and so we're presenting on team building today. Um, and if you'll go ahead and give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Uh, for those that kind of walked in after we started passing out these critique sheets, can you just go ahead and raise your hand so we can give one to you real quick? All right. All right. So. Um, these sheets really aren't mandatory, but they do help us um, in, in getting better uh, for any future events we do have. Uh, we try to do our best to make it as smooth as possible, uh, but any kind of feedback you guys can give us, we greatly appreciate it, um, good or bad. Uh, whatever you guys want us to probably cover in the future or anything like that, just please let us know, all right? Um, so we're going to get into some, some introductions real quick, not to, not to take up too much time with it. Um, so out of our station, there are five of us. Um, however, the other three weren't able to make the event. So today, it's just myself and Sergeant Salazar. Um, quick little background about myself. Uh, native of Houston, Texas. I enlisted when I was 19 years old. Uh, I actually just hit my eight year mark. So eight years in the Marine Corps. Um, was actually stationed in San Diego, uh, deployed over to mainland Japan. Uh, then got stationed over in Hawaii, and then from there deployed to uh, Australia. So, been a little bit, met a lot of people, and some of the things that we're going to cover, I've definitely experienced within my eight years in the Marine Corps. Hopefully, be able to teach you guys some of that as well. And I'll let uh, Sergeant Salazar introduce himself. All right, so I'm Sergeant Salazar. I'm originally from uh, Lake Jackson, Texas, so it's a little bit about 45 minutes south of Houston. I enlisted right after high school in 2011, so I was... 18 years old, you know, living on my own, doing my own thing. Now, I've been all over the place. I've been in uh, North Carolina, California, lived in Hawaii, been in Japan, Germany, Ireland, Kyrgyzstan, Philippines, let me see, Afghanistan. So within the Marine Corps, my job is like communication. So I do a lot of uh, computer work. Uh, I'm a network specialist. So have a lot of experience, especially in today's topic as far as team building. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, as you guys can probably see uh, in parentheses next to our names, we kind of put these words up there, right? These are some of the things that we're going to cover, um, but I already like preemptively kind of labeled each one of us and kind of what our roles are, our personalities are within the team, right? Um, just, to, just to kind of blanket statement, team building really isn't anything complex, and we're definitely not here to like insult your intelligence on team building. We've all been in that position where we've had to do maybe an assignment or a project, working with people that we probably never met before. Um, so we've all done it, we've all experienced it. We're just here to kind of get into some of the fundamentals, right? The actual science behind um, what it is to be a different team member, what kind of personality maybe you identify as, um, and then kind of some effective communication skills as well as some uh, basic planning skills, all right? So before we begin, we do have an activity that we would like to ask about six or eight of you to volunteer for us. Do we have any volunteers at all? Volunteers, voluntold. Okay, so we got one, appreciate it. Two, just step on down. If you want to volunteer for this event, we're gonna have to get up and get a little bit physical, right? Um, we got two, we need about four more. Or, or, I, or I can pick as well. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but kind of works with your participation. Any other four? All right. So is it cool if I pick? Everybody's cool with that? Uh, for random selection? All right, so we'll do uh, one gentleman right here on the end, uh, two right here in the middle, and then three, perfect, thank you, and then you right there, man. Yep, number four, all right. So, this activity is called turning over a new leaf, right, but you're all gonna do it together. So the object is, right, is that all of you are going to stand on top of this sheet. Now, what you, your object is to actually be able to stand on the other side, so you have to flip it, but while you are, are all standing on top of it, okay? The only rules are that nobody can step off of it and you can't carry one another, all right? So we're gonna give it about 10 minutes, um, so all you guys can kind of start planning already, but we're gonna give it about 10 minutes, uh, your time starts, and then uh, we'll, see, we'll see if you guys can get it done. So it has to kind of lay the same way it is right now, all right? So I'm gonna start the timer and let you guys kind of 
kind of happy. Only on one side and pull it over and then stand on it and flip the other one. Then we're going to be a burrito. <laughs> I think we need to stand in one corner and then pull this corner over to there. And then, and then you stand on that, that and then pull it over. Yeah. That's what I just Okay. Well, you said lay down. Grab the corner. And then for everybody in the audience, if you guys want to, right, start coming up with ideas of maybe how you would <laughs> okay. do this in this instance, right? Because we may or may not do this at the end, and we're probably going to have for a few more long things, right? <laughs> so it's time to get creative. It's time to start thinking outside the box. Uh, let's see. You got to think outside the box. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, she's step over. You have to kind of flip this side. You come, hey, you come right here. Yeah, but we got some space right here. Yeah, we can keep making more. Okay. 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 Step back over. I think we're on the other side now. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. And I was at one or two. All right. Yeah, everybody just start moving over this way now. And we can pull that side out. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't make it rude. I was misinterpreting that one. There you go. Here's my corner. There you go. One more to do. All on the other side? Yeah. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, that was a pretty good time. That was only like a minute and a half, so that was that was actually very impressive. Very impressive. Good job. Good job. So, as you guys can probably see, right, um, anything and everything you do takes some kind of teamwork. So maybe you guys didn't catch on to it at all, uh, but some of you already kind of identified your characteristics or I would be able to kind of point them out without you probably even knowing about them. So that's what we're going to get into next are some of the personalities um, within a team, right? So there's different theories on this. There, there's been some that say, you know, there's 14, there's 10. Uh, the Marine Corps, we simplify it to four, right? We kind of keep everything very simple and very direct. So we kind of go with the ideology that there's four types of personalities that anybody uh, can identify as within a team. Now keep in mind that every single person uh, could possess all four of these, all four of these personalities. However, uh, us as people, we naturally gravitate towards one specifically, okay? So the four that you have are the driver, uh, the analytical type person, amiable, and then the expressive. So what, what was your name right here? Taylor, so just based off of the exercise, right, I can kind of identify you more as a driver, right, because you're probably the first one to speak out. Uh, you're the one like, hey, let's start getting this stuff done, let's start making moves. So right off the jump, that was kind of the one that stood out to me. So um, you do have these different types of personalities, this diversity within a team, uh, and this is what helps put everything <coughs> into motion. It kind of starts creating the framework and the foundation of what you're trying to do. Um, if you guys do have to do activities to where you're in a team, you want diversity, okay? I know most of us, we kind of try and group ourselves with the ones that we already know, we've established rapport with, um, but maybe you might be the same strength of a personality, like maybe you're two drivers, right? Well, now you guys are conflicting because y'all have that very uh, demanding presence, like, hey, this is, this is what we should do, we should do this, right? So you definitely want that diversity to keep balance within the team. Now, we are no different, uh, us and, and the fellow recruiters that are a part of our station, we're no different. We have different uh, personalities that we bring to the table. So, for example, if you saw in the beginning, uh, I labeled Staff Sergeant Powdrill, who's not here, as well as uh, Sergeant Curtis, who also couldn't make it, uh, as the driver. That, them, that's probably the best example of who they are. They're very direct. They're very um, first to go in and first to kind of get the, get the job done. Let's start planning. Let's start doing this, right? hands-on very direct okay so um, it's not a bad thing at all because this is going to be the one that's going to start the process okay um, the only caution uh, that this person uh, needs to have is being more receptive to different ideas okay this is a tendency that um, the marine corps has identified that people like this kind of have a struggle with nothing nothing negative but it's just something that they kind of struggle with on, on a basis right so being more receptive to different ideas to actually kind of 
be able to move the process forward. Make sense? Make sense so far? Everybody try your hard Good, good, good. So, me, right, I'm the analytical person, okay? I'm usually the last one to speak up because I want to get all different sides of the story. I want to ensure that I'm hearing this good idea, I'm watching what this person's doing, I'm actually thinking about the problem that's at hand, what resources do we have available. I'm trying to get all the information I can so that way I can put my input in and hopefully it sounds good, hopefully it makes sense and maybe it might be a good idea for us to move forward, right? Um, like I said, this is stuff that we do on a daily basis. So we hold meetings uh, amongst ourselves every Friday where we kind of just summarize everything we did within the week. Um, any big events like this one that we can kind of come into, right? And better prepare. So uh, we do this uh, on a daily basis. Teamwork is our framework within the Marine Corps. It's, it's without a shadow of a doubt that um, this is usually how, how we conduct business. So I'm gonna let uh, Sergeant Salazar talk on the uh, amiable personality. All right, so I'm the, I am the amiable personality in the office. So a lot of times I'm more the quiet one but at the same time, I'm the one that says, that no matter what, I'm gonna have the smile on my face. I'll make sure everybody else is, is relaxed as much as possible. Uh, purpose of that is pretty much, as a team, it gets, gets pretty stressful, um, especially when you don't know what to do, or y'all are trying to plan out what exactly to do. Everybody's kind of at that high level. They're, you know, 100% going, going, trying to solve the problem, trying to, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do, I'm the one that steps in and it's like, hey, you know what? You know, no matter how bad the day is, is it's always going to be better. There's always a better day. <clears throat> but with that, it just it, it helps me out the most. Um, I feel like I, I'm in my, in my uh, you know time in the Marine Corps. It allowed me to kind of grasp everything that's happening around me. Not I wouldn't say more of a the mature type, but I would say of more. I don't I don't stress that much. Um, when I do, it's very it's very rare. Um, something really has to, you know, has to go, you know, sideways real quick. But I pretty much keep the team together, and understand, like, hey, you know, this is, you know, this is who we are. This is all we have. Um, it's, it's a teamwork, so we gotta, we gotta keep it together and keep going. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last one is expressive. So Sergeant, Sal uh, Sergeant Alvarado, uh, who is actually in Houston right now, she couldn't make it, but she is, she is this personality. Okay, so. A lot of her judgment, a lot of her decisions are very emotion-based. Um, and these kind of people, these are the ones that are the creative ones within the group. They can think of outside-the-box ideas, um, just, just random stuff, right? It may be a horrible idea, right? To me, it may be like, we're definitely not doing that. But what that does is they're the ones that are like, hey, any idea you got, let's get it out. Because off those bad ideas, we can figure out, we kind of pinpoint what the good idea is. Like, hey, we're not going to do that. So let's do the opposite of, of that. So they're the ones that kind of start getting the ideas flowing. They start getting um, the ones that write stuff down, drawing pictures out, all that good stuff, right? She's, she's exceptional at that kind of stuff. But also the fact that, you know, she's able to use her imagination. She can help us, like a person like me, where I'm very factual, right? Um, I need to be able to see it. I need to be able to, to relate to that. So with her imagination, she's able to actually communicate very well to me to allow me to understand what it is that she's trying to say, right? So a very effective member of the team, like I said, this is the one that they're gonna start really throwing out some really good ideas, maybe some really bad ones, but hey, any idea is better than no idea, right? So as, as a whole, right, as a whole, you can see how these four personalities will kind of intertwine with each other. And honestly, I would say the one that is overlooked is the amiable one because they are the quiet one, but that's the one that's keeping harmony within everything, as you can see, checks and balances type thing, it, it really does start coming together into a bigger picture. So definitely a driver, so I thought that was pretty good. Um, did have a few um, analytical people, I believe it was you that I would kind of consider maybe a little bit more analytical, right? But um, good personalities all around, so that's really good. Is there any questions at all about this kind of stuff that we just covered so far? Any questions at all? Like I said, it's not, it's not really rocket science, right? But what we're trying to do is just lay down some of the science behind it and break down to truly understand, right? Because we believe as a Marine Corps that the more that we can understand the basis of it, the better we can apply it, right? We really understand how it works. Uh, we can better perfect our skills to be able to communicate that to you guys, right? Which leads me into my next topic, right? 
effective communication. All right, one of the most overlooked things within a group, right? Um, especially in today's day and age, digital, like going digital or going on social media, talking through those means has really kind of slowed down the way we're able to effectively communicate, right? So there is a there is a uh, exercise that, that we do uh, in the Marine Corps every now and then where we'll we'll get a script, right? And it has a bunch of weird jargon in there and we're supposed to read it absolutely monotone, okay? And then as the audience, they're trying to depict what exactly they're trying to say, right? It could be a very exciting event that just happened, but you're trying to talk as monotone as possible, right? To see, to see different ways to actually communicate what you're trying to say, okay? So that's kind of one of the ways we do it. But to break down effective communication, right? It starts with the sender, okay? It starts with the person who has the message, all right? So, hey, I have this idea, right? When we're starting to talk about team building, like, hey, I, I got this idea in mind, cool. Well, now with that, what that sender is gonna do is they're gonna encode the message, whatever that may be, via text, via, via just talking, however, right? And then they're going to relay that message to a receiver through a channel, right? So if we talk military terms, hey, what frequency are you on? That's your channel, right? If we talk person to person, okay, are we both speaking English? Are we speaking a different language? That's our channel, right? So anything and everything you do has a channel, okay? So you wanna make sure your channel is clear, that it's very well understood. Then the recipient has to go ahead and decode that, right? Make sure that they actually heard what you said, but this is where the most important part happens, right? is a difference between hearing and listening, okay? As people, we tend to hear things naturally, right? Like, oh, okay, cool, I got you, right? But what we fail to do, um, more times than not, is provide that feedback, like, hey, I understand exactly what you just said. Let me make sure I understood what you said, right? Because the way I might understand it could be completely different of how they just told me, but it's the way that I perceived it, okay? So the recipient's feedback is definitely a vital part in this to ensure that you know the goal is being met, the intention is being met. All right. Our COs, our commanding officers, and sergeants major, um, this is their key thing. They want to ensure that the the newest person can understand exactly what they're talking about. Right. So this is definitely how we kind of start perfecting that. So in that feedback, like I said, hey, I'm going to make sure that whatever you just told me, I'm going to relay it back to you. Is that right? Cool. That's right. Now the message is complete. That is effective communication in a nutshell, right? Any questions? Any, has anybody um, ever had like a, uh, I guess, uh, any kind of friction in this area before, right? To where you probably told somebody to do something and they, they, uh, they did it and you're like, that's not at all what I said. And now it's all backwards, right? All right, so I know some of the, some of the dudes have experienced that stuff, right? You know, my wife tells me to do something, and I'm doing something completely different, right? But that's just how I understood it, right? Faith communication, it goes, it goes anywhere, right? It goes in, goes in people to people contact all the time, right? Now, who can give me an example of what a barrier might be uh, within that channel? Music. What's that? Music. Okay, music, all right. What else? What's that? Distraction, right? So any sort of distraction. Okay. Um, definitely, if we if we speak if we speak uh, different languages naturally, right? An accent, right, could prohibit that. Um, on a radio channel, uh, any kind of distraction, uh, static, um, anything at all. Not using the phonetic alphabet, right? Stuff like that. How we pronounce our numbers could be uh, barriers in our in our message, and we definitely don't want that kind of stuff. Okay. So, like I said, pretty cut and dry, pretty pretty simple concept, but. Now it's just all broken down. So if you didn't think you could break it down, you definitely can. All right? So like I said, some tips to remember is, is knowing the difference between hearing and listening. Uh, definitely uh, when giving feedback, right? We're taught to provide that positive feedback first and then go with the negative. So let's say somebody gives me an idea. Me as the analytical, I'm like, that is stupid. Like we're definitely not doing that, right? But you give the good feedback first, like, hey, that idea sounds great. However, let's think about this, or let's remember that we have this limitation. Let's remember we don't have this capability. So that plan might not work, right? What that does is that eases the tension within the team, right? Instead of somebody being like, nah, that's, that's dumb, we're not doing that. It's like, okay, well then, I'm just not gonna participate then since I'm not being valued in my input, right? So definitely positive, and then that negative feedback, right? So 
not bashing anybody, but it's constructive criticism, okay? And then mission accomplishment should always be the main focus. So, I mean, we, we as a Marine Corps, you know, we, we don't fail, right? We, we do everything, anything and everything our capabilities to ensure that the mission is accomplished, whatever it might be, something simple, right? But we make sure that it's, a, it's accomplished in a timely manner without wasting resources, without wasting time, unnecessary things that, you know, we could save for potential use later on, all right? And then a couple of these, uh, these uh, pictures that you have here, these are actually some things that we go through in our training, right? So the first one, uh, it's a tower that's actually inverted, so it goes wider as it goes up away from itself. Uh, the platforms get longer and longer. The objective is to get everybody to the top floor, um, but the only way you can do that is by pretty much pulling yourself up and then going upside down to the next one, right? And just continue doing that, but you have to lift each other up. So, hey, teamwork's a, a crucial thing in this one. If not, you're gonna fall and uh, you can get severely hurt. So, you know, teamwork is definitely a necessity in that one. And then the one on the right, is actually our leadership reaction course, which is pretty much exactly what we just did right now. Uh, we give a scenario, very cut and dry. Like, this, is, this is your mission, this is the equipment you have, this is the objective, you have five minutes to prep, go do it. And some of them are like, hey, carry this 50 pound barrel over this wall using a piece of dental floss. And you're like, all right, well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know how to do that, but you gotta get all the equipment across, right? There's always a way to do it. And then that's where the teamwork stuff starts coming into play. And unfortunately, that's done during our crucible event, so it's 54 hours and we're kind of tired and kind of hungry and I'm kind of frustrated with each other already, but they do that for a reason to see if we can de-stress and really think about the problem at hand and be able to handle it accordingly, right? So, um, a lot of good training, a lot of good training. Who's ever heard of this before? The OODA loop? Nobody's ever heard of this before. Good, perfect. So, the OODA loop. Something that uh, the Marine Corps has adopted, um, definitely as part as uh, as, uh, as part of how we do the decision making process. Okay, so now we kind of left communication. Now we're going into the decision making, and then we're going to follow into some planning, right? How how we plan, and maybe that'll probably help you in your future planning, whatever it is that you guys do. So the OODA loop, right? Observe, orient, decide, and act. This is something that we all do naturally. Okay. So, situation happens. Just, we'll just reference the, the turning over a new leaf activity, right? They saw that they saw. Hey, there's a sheet on the ground. This is the scenario. Boom. Observe. Orient. Orient ourselves. Okay. So, hey, there's six of us. We got to stand on top of this sheet, and we got to somehow flip it over. Okay. So now we're on the same page. That's the mission, right? So now we got to decide what are we going to do? How are we going to make this happen? Boom. Start kicking into effect. Start moving. Start going. And then act, right? Actually physically carrying it out, ensuring that it's seen all the way through, and then do every move that they were making whenever they flipped, right? Now they were observing where they're at now, orientating themselves again, and then deciding and acting what their next move. It's a continuous process that we just do as people, but now it's actually drawn out for you, okay? So uh, observe, just like I said, watch what's happening. Look, look and kind of see what's going on, what the situation is. Orientate yourself, right? Where are you? What do you have? What's your time hack? Any kind of things like that. Decide, make a decision, okay? Something I preach to my Marines all the time is that a bad decision now is better than a good decision too late, okay? So sometimes you just gotta start moving, especially when time is, is a, a, a fact of, or time is one of those restrictions that you have. Um, definitely have to start deciding and making making moves happen okay in a safe manner obviously uh, and then act just carrying it out ensuring that the mission is understood between all people it's clear concise to where everybody can understand and then make sure we go for mission accomplishment right remember mission accomplishment is always the uh, number one priority okay then for the rest of the decision making process I'm gonna let Sergeant Salazar talk to you about BAMSIS or what we call BAMSIS. So the Marine Corps has identified a skill that all of us use to kind of continue that decision making. At this point, it's more of actually planning and executing. So we have an acronym called BAMSIS. Many of you have probably never heard this before and it may, it may sound weird, it may sound like a foreign language. So pretty much the B stands for begin planning. So on this stage, we're, we're looking at what the situation, what the mission is. 
what do we have to do exactly to get it accomplished? Like for example, the activity, a lot of y'all just kind of like looked at it like, all right, it's a sheet on the floor. What are we supposed to do? And then once when he, he gave you, hey, look, this is the mission. Everybody got to stand on top of it. It has to get flipped without coming off of it. So from there, somebody's like, all right, hey, look, this is what we got to do. Everybody stand on it. Let's try to flip one corner. Let's try to flip the other corner. So you're already kind of beginning the planning. And then next, next one is the A, the arrange, arrange recon, reconnaissance. Basically what that is, is what do y'all need in order to get it done? Do y'all have the, the equipment, the materials, as far as like what, how are you supposed to, like for example, for me, I kind of use that, use, use this process to plan out what I want to do um, in, in the future. As far as my plans, uh, going to school, whatever the case is, I kind of like, all right, what is my angle? What do I want to be at? Where do I see myself being in like 10, 15 years? Now I gotta arrange, arrange the reconnaissance. What do I gotta do to get there? What's my step? What's the very first step that I gotta take? What's my second one? All the way down to I finally accomplish it. And then make reconnaissance. That's pretty much going out there, doing what you do accomplishing it uh doing your first step continuing following out whether it's you know fishing finishing this semester following the next semester or you know for those who are already about to graduate you know this coming year that that's y'all that's y'all's making y'all's reconnaissance complete the planning so pretty much once you finally get to the end goal the end task you su successfully completed the mission that that's completing the planning you successfully got to where you need to be then the issue, the order. So that this is more of like, hey, uh, as a team, you know, as a supervisor, as a leader, as the one that's that's dri the the driver, the one that's going and has the plan together. They're the ones that's gonna actually, you know, bring their team together and be like, hey, this is this is what we gotta do, and this is how we're going to get to that point. And then for us, for example, in, in the Marine Corps, once you get to a certain rank, uh, about E5, which is a sergeant. Staff sergeant and above, we, we more of like to supervise. We like to make sure our team, as the leader, we're there ensuring things are getting done correctly and everybody's safe and the, you know the supervision is there because it's just you, know, you can't let just anybody go out and do a whole bunch of things and you don't really know what's going on. So that's that's the whole purpose of the supervised port. That is pretty much the the process as we think as Marines uh, that we use day to day basis. It's not just for something big, it's just for what you're gonna do for that day, uh, what you're gonna do tomorrow. Every day in life we use this, uh, use the BAM system to, to kind of plan our, our days, our, our months, years, whatever it is that, that we do. So is there any questions as far as like any of these steps that we use at all? Or any kind of like, hey, I don't know what that meant, maybe that didn't make sense. So we're doing some effective communicating up here. We're doing pretty good so far. All right, good. Um, definitely, this is, like he said, definitely something that we use every single day. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that has been instilled in us for, for all these years that it's just second nature. We can't help but, but do stuff like this. Anything I do, I'm, I'm gonna go to the store, right? Okay, what do I need? Stuff like that, right? Every, everything's the same thing. Um, one thing I would tell you, kind of like a tip for you guys, right? An effective planning tip that, that I do is to get to where you want to go, just plan backwards. All right, so I need to, I need to, I don't know, go, like I said, go to the store, right? Okay, well, before I go to the store, what do I need to do? Okay, well, I need to get the keys for the car. Okay, now I got the keys for the car. What do I need to do? And you just keep planning backwards to where you're at right now. And that kind of helps cover all the bases that you're trying to think forward. Start thinking backwards, right? Something that I do. It's pretty effective. Um, it gets it gets me where I need to go, um, pretty pretty well, right? And then that last one at the end. That's a joke that I make. Marine Corps. We talk about we, we use acronyms all the time. We could have we have an entire conversation of just acronyms, and we know exactly what we're talking about. I mean, USMC, United States Marine Corps. So that one is what will we do without acronyms? All right, probably do nothing because hey, Marines, it's like that's just our second language, all right? So any questions? Thus far, well, actually, that's probably the next thing is, boom. Is there any questions, right, um, about anything that we talked about or anything that you guys kind of want to know? Like I said, really nothing crazy, right? Just little tips and tricks of 
better understand the fundamentals so that way you can actually apply it, right? So um, we're open for any kind of questions that you guys may have. I say it could be about the subject, could be about something else, but we're here for you guys as a, as a resource. So fire away. Let's I have one question. Like, why do y'all say that basically? So that's it's a that's a good question. Everybody heard that. So why why are we at our grooming standards, right? Um, believe it or not, there is there's a Marine Corps order out there that tells us how we are going to have our hair cut, right? This is a this is a choice. By, by the way, I choose to shave my head right up. You don't have to, um, but it tells us how we're going to keep our our standards, our grooming standards, how we dress out in public, type stuff. That's just to ensure we're upholding that that image that you know people expect us to hold, right? So. It's just because it's kind of mandated by an order, All right? So, good question, though. Anything else? Any other kinds of questions? You look like you have one. I was about to point to you. What's up? Okay. Well, you may not do that. That's fine. That's fine. Are the drill instructors in boot camp as mean as in Full Metal Jacket? <laughs> uh, this is a great movie. Uh, if you haven't seen that, it's a pretty good movie. Pretty, pretty. We get a kick out of it, right? Um, to, to keep it, I guess, kind of simple, yes, right? Like, um, and that, that's kind of the reason why uh, I think we all revert back to that is because it's that high stress environment for a reason, right? Uh, Marines were, I mean, I don't like to boast or anything, but I think that when it comes to a stressful situation, we're able to hold our own pretty well and be able to think about what's going on before like just freaking out and kind of doing something opposite of mission accomplishment, right? So. I call it organized chaos. It's there for a reason. It helps us keep in that high stress environment so we can kind of figure out what is it, what's going on and what do we need to do. Just like those courses I was telling you guys about, the leadership reaction course, stuff like that. At that point in time, you're tired, you're hungry, and they're just on you 24 seven, and you're just trying to go home and see your family, so you gotta get the mission done. It's just all, all those things that kind of lead to the bigger picture. Right, so I get asked that one a lot though. It's a good question, good question. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, okay. No, no being else, that's all good. You know what I'm saying? We just, I said, we want to ensure we're out here covering everything and everything, all right? So this next slide is just some, some contact information for you guys, right? So um, if you guys, we try and tell, we'll tell you guys like we tell high schools. Some of you probably even were in high school when we were at one of your schools, maybe. Possibly, right? We talk, talk to a lot of people. We are a resource for you guys, okay? I know it says uh, Marine Corps recruiter and stuff like that, right? That, that's not the main goal out here. The main goal is to be a resource for you guys to do stuff like we just did today, okay? Anything and everything that we can do to help you uh, better become more effective in whatever it is that you're doing, we just want to make you more successful. Any little workshop that we can hold, any little class that we can hold, uh, if you guys want like good workouts, I mean, we have workout days and stuff like that that we invite people to. We're here for you guys. We're here as a resource to truly answer questions, concerns uh, that you might have about anything. Right? Like I said, eight years in the Marine Corps, eight years in the Marine Corps, we kind of experienced a lot. So I think we're very strong in being able to talk about life stuff too. Right? We've been through a lot of a lot of stuff. So um, we're here for you guys. So definitely take down our numbers, or you can add us on on Instagram or follow our main Instagram page. It's the Beaumont Marines. Uh, we post a lot of good content. Content. Uh, we actually post like question and answer type days and stuff like that too. So um, if you don't want to ask us it here, you can definitely ask us on there, and we'll be sure to be able to cover all concerns you guys have. All right? Any last save rounds? Anything at all? No. Okay. So since we have time, correct? All right. Since we have time, does anybody else want to try that activity? If we have enough volunteers, you guys can't. Or we can do something completely different. Actually, we'll, we'll do something pretty good. All right, real quick. Has anybody heard of the, the dog, the chicken, and the, the rice little mind-boggling exercise? Anybody ever heard of that before? Somebody might reference like a wolf or something like that. All right, so if you guys want, we can kind of do like team one, two, and three. You guys keep it simple, right? Um, so if you have heard it and you know the solution, I would probably tell you don't participate just because I don't want you to, to give the answer right away. I want to let these people think. So here's a scenario. You're a farmer, okay? Uh, the farmer is going to be the spokesperson for each group. The rest of you are villagers, okay? The farmer has a dog, a chicken, and a bag of rice. You got to get it across the river, okay? You got to get all three items across the river. However, only one item can be 
in the boat with the farmer at a time. Only one, one of those things, okay? However, all three have to make it across however you do it. The only limitation is that the dog and the chicken can be left together because the dog will eat the chicken. The chicken and the rice can't be left together because the chicken will eat the rice. So, how much time are you? Okay, so about 15. So we'll take about, say about five. We'll go around the middle, we'll do like eight. Eight minutes to kind of figure out how you would get all three out of the cross. Any questions? You said one trip? No, all you have to do is take one item with you at a time. That's the only stipulation. There's nothing crazy. I had somebody say like, oh, it's your dog. The dog will follow you to the walk now. The dog's got to be in the boat at one point in time, right? There's, there's no other way to get it across but in the boat, okay? So take some time, uh, kind of see what you guys have, and then I'll ask for each one of your spokespersons at the end, all right? All right, let me get a uh, spokesperson from this side. Uh... All right, stand on up and tell us what your solution is. If anybody else got the same solution, we'll just kind of say you got it right as well, right? So, what you got? So, the first thing you do is you take the chicken across, yep. and then you go back, and then you get the rice, and then you get the rice, you drop the rice off, then you pick the chicken back up, then you bring it back, trade it for the dog or the wolf or whatever it is, and then you go bring the wolf back over, and then you go back and get the chicken. Anybody else have that same solution? Y'all had it? Y'all kind of have it or y'all had it? Y'all just saying y'all got it. Y'all had the same one and the same one? So yeah, that's exactly how you do it, right? So um, a little bit of a brain teaser, right? But hey, you know, just something to kind of keep you fresh, all right? So, um, but that, that's pretty much it. That ends our presentation. We hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, please fill out these critiques. Sheets. Let us know how we did, how we can get better. And uh, we'll stick around if you guys have any last questions, all right? Thank you guys for your time.